Welcome to the Inaminia video tutorial about concentrating solar power technology. This is Unit 3, Block 3. It gives an overview of measurement techniques for concentrating solar collectors. My name is Eckhard Lüpfert. I've been working for DLR for the last 20 years in parabolic trough collector development and testing and measurement of their properties, but also other collector technologies, linear Fresnel towers and dishes. Measurement technologies are among my favorite topics. What are the measurement requirements in concentrating collectors? We want to measure the components, in particular mirror reflectance, mirror shape, receiver, optical absorptance, receiver thermal losses. We want to measure the collector assembly properties, the collector tracking, the collector field, thermal output performance, the solar to thermal efficiency, by measuring temperature, flow and fluid properties. And in the field we also measure mirror cleanliness and other ambient conditions. Last not least, the solar irradiation, beam irradiance falling onto the solar collectors when we are operating them. Overall requirement for our solar fields is high performance at low cost and the goal of optimization requires, of course, that we measure what we are doing. We require 20 or 40 years of lifetime for our components and with maintenance, recover any degradation effects. But what does it mean for the components? The performance requirements for the components are a good optical and thermal property, a high geometric accuracy. And we achieve this in reality by appropriate component specifications for the suppliers, by quality control in production of components and assembly and startup, by fulfillment of existing standards and new standards, in the near future also with new components and new materials in an increasing competition in the market. So what are the quality control measures to reach, to reach high performance? We are measuring, measuring, and again measuring the tracking, geometry, the mirror, reflectance and shape and durability, the receiver, performance and losses, the thermal system, losses, output, power, the power block performance, cooling, transformer losses, and the storage capacity, power, temperature. Let's start on the mirrors as one of the key components. We assess the mirror quality in terms of reflectance, spectral reflectance measured in a spectrophotometer, specular reflectance measured with a reflectometer and evaluate the solar weighted properties. And of course, we need to evaluate the shape. The pictures below show a summary of this, what I'm going to show now in detail. Measuring the reflectance of mirrors means measuring the direct specular reflectance relevant for the solar spectral range. The reflectance is measured with state-of-the-art lab equipment, spectrophotometers, in combination with references and appropriate instructions for these lab equipments. The weighting is done with a solar spectrum from ASTM G173 for direct solar light. And this gives us the solar weighted hemispherical and solar weighted specular reflectance values. Such definitions have come out of collaborations between the different large test centers, DLR, CMUT, ANREL and in round robin tests and are getting to standard levels. Mirror shape is relevant for the intercept factor of the rays on the receiver. We have different techniques to measure the shape. Deflectometry is the most successful one developed in DLR over the last years. And we have already measurement systems in the market. For example, the QDEX system, who shows such pictures as on this slide. Such measurements are used for the qualification of products and prototypes. They're used in quality control in production. And they're also used in inline process control in the manufacturing. The quality criterion of the mirror surface is the slope deviation, the standard deviation of the slope values, SD, or the focus deviation, the standard deviation of the reflected ray, FD. It gives us a quality parameter for the form or deformation of mirrors. These measurement techniques can be performed indoor and also outdoor in the field. Another way to measure is photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is used for 3D measurements for mirror shape and can then be used to calculate optical efficiency or deformation effects. The picture shows here the application of photogrammetry targets onto the mirrors and onto the absorber supports to determine the geometry of a collector with photogrammetry. We need a module reference in order to evaluate the mirror alignment and the receiver alignment to each other. And on the collector reference basis, 
We are looking at the alignment between modules and drive, and this in all collector angles in order to determine any deviations in torsional loads by friction or wind loads. This measurement is applied on prototypes, as in this pictures, but also in serious production in quality control. The concentrated geometry can be measured with a deflectometry also when the collector is fully mounted. We measure the mirror shape with a non-contact measurement by taking the reflected image and can evaluate the mirrors and the support structure geometry. Important criteria here for the measurement are the position of the receiver tube, deformation under operational loads, effects of dead load, wind load and drive forces and tracking accuracy. So how does the focal area look like? We can also measure this as shown in these pictures and from these pictures we can read detailed information about deformation of mirrors or the structure or the positioning of the absorber tube. The picture shows here the photogrammetry on the parabolic trough collector with the typical applied target stickers used as targets for the photogrammetry, for the digital photogrammetry. The result of such measurement is the 3D shape in this example of the Euro trough collector. Uh, in a stretched presentation here, you see each of the measurement points with a uh, deviation from the ideal zero green level, but the deviation of these points on the collector are only in the range of one or two millimeters in order to comply with the overall quality exigencies. Again, showing how this method is applied. On the left, you see a collector with applied targets. On the right picture, you see the collector. We apply the stickers, we measure with photogrammetry from different positions and then evaluate the shape of this collector and can use this information to calculate the focusing quality, intercept factor, the flux distribution around the absorber tube and compare that with measurements and ray tracing of the same. It makes a lot of sense to apply measurements during the assembly of the collectors in order to eliminate problems or quality defects before the solar field is ready. We can measure large area collectors in order to examine deformations, forces and loads. We can measure the flux distribution around the absorber tube with diet array configurations or target plates. And these target plate measurements here show the variability on one single collector of our radiation. We can convert these pictures into intercept factor values. The following graph shows this. You see that more spillage of radiation results in lower intercept factors, lower performance. You clearly see here the target of the optimization to go towards intercept factor values of 95, 96% and more. Different techniques are used to measure the shape of the collector. Variants of the distant observer techniques, uh, analysis of the reflected image, allow a calculation of the alignment of the collector. The receiver is reflected in the mirror and we can evaluate the position of the reflected image. Other techniques use laser and scan the mirror in order to evaluate the shape. A system called V-Shot, shown here, does a ray tracing with a laser and an analysis of the reflected position. We prefer the deflectometric reflector analysis with a QDEX system based on image recognition of a target in the reflector. We can measure many points in one step and we use a detect uh, the digital camera as detector with a high resolution and the resulting detector data, a photo. These pictures show examples from troughs, heliostats, linear finales, dishes, mirror facets, how flexible this system is to be applied, how detailed is the information that we can get in research and industrial application. These pictures show the measurement principle. We reflect the image of certain stripes and look at the reflex in this mirror and can use this information to evaluate the shape of the mirror itself. Resulting images look like this. They are in milliradians of slope deviation of normal vector deviation for these parabolic trough mirrors. Zero is the ideal parabola and what we see here are the deviations of the reflector from this ideal parabola measured in milliradians. This information can be converted into focus deviation. What is the resulting deviation of the reflected ray when it comes to hit the receiver. And with all this data, we can do ray tracing analysis, we can do intercept factor calculations, uh, we can predict the performance, we can specify component geometry, we can analyze mechanical loads, and we apply this for prototypes in solar fields and in serious quality control.
We apply in our concentrators spectrometric reflectance measurements of our mirrors, 3D geometry measurements on the reflector surface, slope measurements on the whole collector reflector surface, deformation measurements, metal support structure geometry measurements, analysis of the slope and deformation of our support structure. And for this, we use tools like photogrammetry, reflection measurement, and flux measurements. Let's come to the receivers and their thermal loss parameters. There are several ways to measure thermal losses of receivers. An easy way to do this is in thermal equilibrium in steady state. We heat the inside of the absorber tube with constant power and measure the equilibrium temperature and this power. At the ends of the receivers, we need insulation or active temperature barriers to have an adiabatic balance around our measurement system. This kind of measurement is done in lab scale. The second way to measure is in quasi steady state outside in the field with a heat transfer fluid flowing through the receiver tube at constant inlet -let temperature, constant mass flow, measuring the outlet temperature and cal calculating the enthalpy difference. For these measurements, we don't have solar radiation on the receiver, we just measure the heat losses because with radiation on the receiver, we need the exact information of optical efficiency. Other methods to evaluate the thermal parameters of receivers are emittance measurements and connectivity measurements. These require destruction of the receiver and measuring of individual components. As indicator, we can use the glass envelope temperature. The hotter the glass temperature, the higher the losses are. But this depends on the wind speed, of course. I want to show you the test bench at DLR for performance of the heat loss measurements. The heat cartridge is inside the receiver tube. We measure the power that we use to heat up the receiver tube to constant temperature. We calculate losses at the actual ends of receivers and correct the power and reach measurements with a measurement uncertainty of temperature of below 5%. This method is non-destructive and as a result we get specific hit lots in kilowatts per square meter or watts per meter on the nominal absorber surface. We typically report this with a reference at an average operating temperature of 350 degrees. The state-of-the-art trough receivers have thermal losses of below 900 watts per square meter at 350 degrees from the effective absorber tube surface. This graph here shows a comparison of different receiver tubes measured in the labs in the last years. The property of these receivers today are improving. The specific heat losses in watts per meter are today even lower than what we see here in this graph. So for characterization in the quartz center, we do measurements of thermal losses. We measure solar heated receivers. We measure in the solar simulator. We measure in the field and we measure specific absorber tube optical properties. I want to introduce you the solar simulator test bench that we've developed at DLR, which is very specific for parabolic trough receivers. The solar simulator illuminated with metal halide lamps and the radiation is reflected onto our sample receiver with an elliptical mirror cylinder with flat end mirrors. The lamps are in one focal line and the receiver are in the other focal line of the elliptic shape. The length of the test bench currently is five meters. so. All typical products fit into this receiver. And from these measurements, we get results of the output of the receiver. In this case, with cold temperature, we cool the thing with cold water and make the energy balance and come to an overall optical efficiency of the receiver, including the effects of the glass, including the effects of the absorptance and including the geometry of the bellows of today higher than 87% conversion efficiency from solar energy lights, light energy to thermal energy. I want to show you also a few thermal images to identify the situation in the field with shields, with absorber supports, with vacuum losses and other effects. The infrared camera is quite useful to measure and detect failures, but also as in this next slide to see the temperature distribution on the absorber tube itself to identify heat transfer to identify checking accuracy. All these measurement experience goes towards standardization. We need sets of definitions and evaluation criteria for our measurement techniques, goals of which are of course quality and reliability, competitiveness of both new and old technologies. We are aiming at a set of technical rules and standard terms which lead us to reduce technology risks. The actual status as of now, we have activities in the labs, in solar paces, 
and in standardization organizations together with industry. A new IEC technical co committee has been established with Spain as secretary. But in parallel, we also already have pre-standards for mirrors and receivers that are already in use. As promised, we need to measure also the irradiance, the amount of sun that comes onto our solar field. We have different measurement technologies, the high performance measurement for which we need qualified stuff on site and electric power or the solar resource assessment with remote stations. With the relevant differences in case of remote systems, we use rotating shadow band irradiometers as premium choice for the measurement of DNI in the resource assessment. But pure heliometers are used for precise measurement under monitored conditions. The stability is high. The root mean square deviation of sensor signal is below 10 watts per square meter. Deviation of daily sum is below 0.05 kilowatt hours per square meter and in the annual sum we can reach even with rotating shadowband pure heliometers below 1% uncertainty. We measure component properties in the quality control and fabrication. We determine specifications and we have capacities for this in the DLR Quartz Center. We measure the assembly of collectors. We check the quality in the assembly process. And we can do quality control surveys, inspection of construction quality, measurement of overall collector quality in the field. And we go into details in commissioning and acceptance with measuring the performance, monitoring the operation and maintenance quality. And this is part of another lecture in this presentations, working on details of the field performance measurements. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening.